1951, Linda's seventh birthday. That's Patty Nichols. And red and white is Molly Thornberry. Hunter Minix is there somewhere with some big new teeth. David Thornberry. Mead Miller and Dale Miller are both there. And Beth Jenkins is around in pink. Saw her just a moment ago. That ritual moment blowing out the candles. <laughs> And there's Marjorie and Patty Nichols. Oh, big doings they always were, those birthday parties. At least for the first eight or so years of life. There's Beth. And dear little Lulu in green and little red-headed Rodney. <laughs> Lucy always manages to have something very feminine. Cherry Blossom time, Molly Thornberry with her mother, Eloise, and little David in Eloise's arms, and in the tree, Rodney. All those years, I haunted the Tidal Basin and Kenwood in the spring. A very sweet, pensive Linda. And maybe rather, with her little godchild, Lucy. And that toe-headed Molly. In those days, Lyndon was in the Senate. Mary was his right hand. She used to spend a lot of nights with us. And no doubt this was made on a weekend because her days at the office were very long ones. And Mrs. Johnson came to visit us that spring. Lyndon asked me to take her shopping and buy her the prettiest thing we could, and we did. A very handsome lavender suit, her favorite color, and a big picture hat. And here we are in front of the tile of scarlet roses that divided us from dear Dr. Reed. Mrs. Johnson and I used to go off hunting antiques and ancestors down into the Virginia countryside. And look at the children all dressed up in that matching sister dresses. They were the Easter outfit. Linda Bird was always Mrs. Johnson's pet. Or so we thought, although she was, she was judiciously silent on admitting any such thing. And there the Thornberries, our neighbors, had walked over to see us. Look at my hydrangeas. What a garden I was. The swing in the backyard. Saw a lot of service, oh, not as much as Dillman. And out behind us, you see the corn growing? Dr. Reed had a wonderful garden. For years and years behind us there was just a vacant lot, which we rejoiced in covering with a gardening. There's Lucy with Molly and David. And that little red-headed, curly-headed Rodney joins the group. They must have been dressed up for church. Molly in yellow, Lucy by in blue. And here it is, Lucy's birthday. In 1951, Lucy would have been four years old. Another one of those birthday parties in which Lissy Grant and the Jenkins and all of us had a good time in the backyard. And here we are down at St. Joe's Island, one of the best vacations the Johnson family ever had. 
John, Nellie Conley, and their children were along with us. There's Kathleen, there's Lucy. Not big enough to buffet the waves, that slim little girl. John, holding a rather frightened, happy Lucy. A little plump Linda by the side of him. Talk about unexplored shoreline. Little Johnny Conley. See America first. <laughs> Nellie Conley having it up. In her days at the University of Texas, Nellie played in the little theater. She was a star. I can't say as much for this one. The house at St. Joe's Island. Quiet, secluded, private time. Full of children and good talk. In the morning, we'd swim. In the afternoon, we'd go rabbit hunting. And we'd sit on the sand dunes. And we'd explore. I remember we found a weather balloon one time. And we saw it way down the beach, a great, big, strange, black contraption. And we wondered if it was something from Mars. It had an other world look. And there's a Portuguese man of war. And it was there on the beach that we found the green glass balls that came off of a fisherman's net. Heaven knows where. Somebody said they came from Portugal. Somebody else said they came from Japan. And then someone laughed and said the wrong ocean. Birds following the shrimp boats. And there's the palm dotted island from our boat. And a sun-loving linden. And Nellie, cute and young. She's got a fish. Dreaming of what's to come, Johnny? <laughs> Our assorted children. And there's the staff. Once more in the backyard at Dillman. You can't beat St. Augustine grass. And here is the Texas picnic, the Texas State Society. And there's Gene Autry with Linda on one side and Lyndon behind him, Lucy in front. And Lucy's fat, and I think you might find she's lost some teeth. And there is a speaker, bless his heart, wearing the badge of the Texas State Society. Jean Autry and Lyndon greeting the folks. Dale Miller and Mary. Dale always worked hard in the Texas State Society. In the back was C. Sid Richardson. Lyndon was president that year, and in the summer, we always had uh, a big picnic. This time, it was extra good, a barbecue. There's John Connolly, Mary, and Sid Richardson, and the chow line. Lyndon and Jean Autry. Marjorie Jenkins, and Mrs. Wire, and Tom Clark. And Jean Daniel, wife of Senator Daniel. Mrs. Cabell. Senator and Mrs. Tom Connolly. And all the Jenkins family, at least all that they were then, which is four. 
young Eddie Weisel down working on a committee. Congressman Bob Pogue, Mrs. Pogue. And Senator McFarlane, Mrs. McFarlane. He was the leading Democrat in the Senate at that time, and Lyndon was his assistant, as I remember. I think Lyndon must have been whipped at that time. Attorney General Herbert Brownell, who was in Eisenhower's cabinet. Lucy is six. We always celebrated it in the backyard. She's beginning to grow up. The same crowd was there very much. There's Emily Shelton and her little boy Ames, and Lissy Grant and her mother were there, and Beth and little Walter Jenkins and Marjorie. But they're building a house behind 30th Place, and no more will we hear the hoot owls. And the rabbits won't come across to eat our lettuce. There's, there's something gone from the quiet, rural quality.